Welcome to this gathering of the Manatee Unitarian Universalist Fellowship, where for 60 years diversity of faith, race, ethnicity, and sexual and gender identity have been honored by people of courage and vision. We are a covenanted community bound together by our belief in freedom of worship, love, and respect. If you are visiting with us this morning or searching for a spiritual home, we welcome you as our guests and extend an invitation to join us for refreshments and conversations after the service. About 15 minutes after today's service, I will have a meet and greet the minister here in the sanctuary for informal conversation about the fellowship. There is no set agenda. It is an opportunity to get to know each other better and an opportunity to ask any questions. And save the dates. Beginning on Saturday, June 1st at 10 a.m. to noon, Randy McRae, as lead for our publicity committee, is looking for your creative ideas in how we might promote ourselves better in Manatee County. The first of four sessions will focus on brainstorming. The sessions following will be creating the action steps needed to make the ideas selected reality. I'd like to call forward Pat Rohr, um, a board member 
to light our chalice. And please join me in reading responsively our chalice lighting words. We light this chalice. To help us move from under to truth. To help us move from ignorance to wisdom. To help us move from bondage to freedom. We A person will worship something. Have no doubt about that. We may think our tribute is paid in secret in the dark recesses of our hearts, but it will out. That which dominates our imaginations and our thoughts will determine our lives and character. Therefore, it behooves us to be careful what we worship, for what we are worshiping we become. Opening hymn this morning is number 187. It sounds along the ages. Please rise in body or spirit. Please be seated. Please join me in a responsive reading, number 594. I believe it might also be in your order of service, yes? No, so five, number 594 in the back of the gray hymnal. We affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of every person. We believe that each and every person is worth the inherent worth and dignity of every person. We affirm and promote justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. We believe that all people should be treated fairly. 
we affirm and promote acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth. We believe that our churches are places where all people are accepted and where we become the together. We affirm and promote a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. We affirm and promote the right of conscience and the use of democratic process. We believe that all people should have a voice and a vote about the things that concern them. We believe that all people should have a voice We affirm and promote the goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. My copy ended. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought I thought <laughs> I thought it, it was like oh this must have been uh, printed before the seventh one was added. So <laughs> we will we will have our musical interlude now.
1984, the General Assembly of the Unitarian Universalist Association approved for the association's bylaws, Article 2, as its guiding mission, what we now call the seven principles and six sources. These principles are so well written that when the bylaws called for this article of our bylaws to be revisited every 15 years, the association delayed that review by six years. And then when they were finally reviewed by the assembly, the assembly voted down any changes. We are now in year four of a new 15-year cycle for the affirmed purposes and principles of our national association. The next time to begin a possible review of these principles will be in 2030. The reason for this review is because of the belief that revelation is unfolding with new understandings of truth. Now, our visitors may not be familiar with these seven principles that our congregation covenants to uphold with other congregations in our association. And the responsive reading we just read, while it covers those principles, it is not in the wording, the exact wording of our principles. So please read with me the seven principles found in the beginning of our gray hymnal, very beginning. We, are we there? No. Only a couple of pages in from the front. It's a page before the music starts. You passed it. You got it. We, the member congregations, please join. The Unitarian Universalist Association covenant to affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of every person, justice, equity, and compassion in human relations, acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth in our congregations, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning, the right of conscience and the use of the democratic process within our congregations and in society at large, the goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all, respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. Contrary to what people may say about Unitarian Universalism, I am thinking of Garrison Keeler of Prairie Home Companion fame, and even some Unitarian Universalists who declare that we can believe anything that we want. We cannot. These seven principles form the basis for a theology of Unitarian Universalism. They state that what we believe is to be grounded in these principles. They answer basic questions that all religions seek to answer. How are we to be together? What is the end goal? And what is our place in the universe? Ministers way smarter than me have placed these principles into theological categories. Anthropological, who are we? What is our purpose? What makes us human? Eschatolo eschatology, this is why I'm not a theologian, eschatology, you may know this in the Christian sense of Armageddon and the book of Revelation, but it also refers to what is our human destiny. What is humanity's ultimate goal? Unitarian Universalists believe it is to create beloved community. Ecclesiology, how are we to gather as a people of faith? Cosmology, what is the context in which we find ourselves? 
What is the universe? Epistemology. How do we know what is true? Principles three and five, acceptance of one another and the right of conscience, answers the ecclesiology question of how we are to be together. Principles two and six, justice, equity, and compassion, and the goal of world community, answer the eschatological question of our end goal. Principles one and seven, inherent worth and dignity, respect for the interdependent web, answers the anthropological and cosmology question of our place in the universe. In principle four, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning answers the question of how we know these other principles to be the case. It is the epistemological answer that religion seeks to answer. Again, other ministers smarter than me have said that this principle, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning, is the keystone principle on which the other principles are dependent on. How do we know that justice, equity, and compassion in human relations is an end goal? Or how do we know we need to respect the interdependent web of all existence? We have the responsibility, the personal responsibility, to search for truth and meaning. When we do this, we begin to see that if we have justice, equity, and compassion in human relations, that people are freer in being their full selves. They are able to reach towards new potentials never dreamed of before. And when they are freer, we also become freer. Our liberation is tied up in their being free. How do we do this search for truth and meaning? Our six sources give some clues as to how one might accomplish this. Direct experience of that transcending mystery and wonder affirmed in all cultures, which moves us to a renewal of the spirit and an openness to the forces which create and uphold life. Words and deeds of prophetic women and men which challenge us to confront powers and structures of evil with justice, compassion, and the transforming power of love. Wisdom from the world's religions, which inspire us in our ethical and spiritual life. Jewish and Christian teachings, which call us to respond to God's love by loving our neighbors as ourselves. Humanist teachings, which counsel us to heed the guidance of reason and the results of science and warn us against idolatries of the mind and spirit. And spiritual teachings of earth-centered traditions which celebrate the sacred circle of life and instruct us to live in harmony with the rhythms of nature. It takes spiritual discipline to begin this journey of a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. In this age of alternative facts and manufactured truths, it is sometimes hard to know what is true. We are bombarded by misaligned facts placed out of context coupled with out and out lies. Conspiracy theories from the right and the left are rampant, all aimed at creating, at best, a mistrust of the other. Some are more nefarious than others. So it becomes important to have a healthy skepticism when claims are made, even alleged scientific ones. We each have to take the responsibility to check 
what we have heard, seen, and experienced. My grandfather would say to me as a ki- when I was a kid, believe half of what you see, a quarter of what you hear, and none of what you read. <laughs> there is some truth to that, I believe. And if you read something, make sure you can check its references and sources. Are they viable ones? What are others saying about the same topic? But the goal is not just to learn knowledge. Buddhist Jiyome Kabusi said, regardless of how much we learn, unless your life changes, nothing is learned. It is just accumulated knowledge. So seeking truth and meaning has a higher purpose than just knowing the facts of stuff. Reverend Scott Asang, in a sermon on the fourth principle, said, The point of seeking truth is not to find or discover truth for its own sake. The purpose of seeking truth is to change me, to make me grow, to help me bring more beauty and justice and love into our world. The purpose of seeking truth is to bring about a better me and a better world. And there it is. If you take nothing else from this sermon, take this gem. How does seeking truth change you to grow? Help you be a better person to bring more beauty and justice and love into our world. The theology of Unitarian Universalism found in our principles ultimately brings us to this place. How are we together? What is the end goal? And what is our place in the universe? Seeking truth and meaning should aid in our coming together. It should help in living a better life towards building the beloved community. And it should aid in being humble in our relationship with our co-inhabitors of this planet, the animals, the fish, the plants, because only together will we survive as a planet. Unitarian Universalists do not profess a creed or a doctrine. Therefore, it is your responsibility to find what is true for you And the key that it is true for you is if it aids you to shine brighter love and beauty into the world. If it does not serve you to connect with your whole self, to love more fully, to live more generously in your spirit, then perhaps it is not truth. If you find it making you more judgmental of others, more biased against groups of people, more desiring of squashing their spirit to live fully, then I wager it is not truth. Because Unitarian Universalists do not have a creed, we have people who have found that a belief in God or gods or goddesses empower them to be more fully who they are. We have people who have found that not having a belief in any god empowers them to be more fully who they are. We have people who claim the Christian name because when they think on the core teachings of Jesus, they find it helps them to be generous with one another. We have people who claim the Buddhist name because when they consider the Dharma the Buddha presented, they are more grounded and and present in the moment, more able to offer perspectives that are not attached to personal baggage. We have people who have found that the cycles of the earth, honoring the solstice and Beltane, help them move through the year with thanksgiving and joy. In this place, you have the freedom to search out and know the truth. Truth as universal truth and capital T, and truth as personal truth. Both 
should aid, aid you in changing to live a richer, more fuller life. What you believe, therefore, becomes important in knowing truth. Unitarian Universalists are not free to believe whatever, but are challenged to believe that with that which builds the foundations for beloved community. This is why Unitarian Universalists have focused on dismantling structures of white supremacy, sought to pass restoring voting rights to folks who have served their debt to society, support women's right to autonomy over their bodies, and LGBTQ civil rights, and risked arrest in providing human humanitarian aid to the migrants crossing the desert into the states. What you believe can be freeing or enslaving. Sophia Lyon Foz, religious educator of the 20th century, wrote, it matters what we believe. Some beliefs are like walled gardens. They encourage exclusiveness and the feeling of being especially privileged. Other beliefs are expansive and lead the way into wider and deeper sympathies. Some beliefs are like shadows, clouding children's days with fears of unknown calamities. Other beliefs are like sunshine, blessing children with the warmth of happiness. Some beliefs are divisive, separating the saved from the unsaved, friends from enemies. Other beliefs are bonds in a world community where sincere differences beautify the pattern. Some beliefs are like blinders, shutting off the power to choose one's direction. Other beliefs are like gateways opening wide vistas for exploration. Some beliefs weaken a person's selfhood. They blight the growth of resourcefulness. Other beliefs nurture self-confidence and enrich the feeling of personal worth. Some beliefs are rigid, like the body of death, impotent in a changing world. Other beliefs are pliable, like the young sapling, ever growing with upward thrust of life. In this place, you have the freedom to know the truth. Find ways to engage that search for truth here, so we may change our lives to bring more beauty, more justice, and more love into our world. Blessed be. Please join me in singing hymn 297, The Star of Truth. It is found in our gray hymnal, Please Rise in Body or Spirit.
Please be seated. We come to a time now of prayers of the community. Please continue to hold the Bart's family in your thoughts. In addition to Daryl's journey, son Gareth is also having a medical journey of his own. Carol is grateful that her other son has come to help keep things on course. Zeta Merrill sends her greetings from Arizona. She has found a small cluster of Unitarians where she lives, and they gather once a month for fellowship. There are many who are not able to be with us and might enjoy a note in the mail, a phone call, a visit. If you notice someone who is not here today, please make a point to reach out to them this week. Let them know we are thinking of them and that we care about them. And there are many in our community that are going through transitions in their life, moves to assisted living, moves to be closer to family, grieving the loss of loved ones, health concerns that require adjustments to activities. Please offer a listening ear and other forms of support to our friends and members who are traveling these roads of change. Now, let us hold these joys and sorrows and those that have not yet found expression in our hearts in a time of silence. May our hearts be inspired to offer support to one another. Blessed be and amen. We have a special collection this morning. I'd like to call off Arlene um, with the Peace and Justice Coalition at Fogartyville. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for inviting us to be with you this morning. Um, Dave Beaton is here with me also, and many of you know we were members at this fellowship for many years when we lived in Bradenton and I was chair of the Social Justice Committee here, so it's a pleasure to be with you this morning. And there was a little bit of confusion. I'm gonna kind of give you an overview of two organizations, WSLR and the Peace Education and Action Center because there's been confusion about that relationship and I think I can clarify it. And what we're going to do today, you are going to write your uh, donation checks to the Peace Center, but we're actually going to share uh, the collection with both organizations and you may understand why <laughs> when I go through a little bit of the history. Um, so WSLR is our low power nonprofit community radio station founded in 2004 by David Beaton and myself and others that believed in the power of independent media and that it would be important uh, in our community. Um, we also, Dave and myself, happen to own and operate the Fogartyville Cafe which was located right behind McKechnie Field here in Bradenton. So that's where the initial meetings and the brainstorming for WSLR started, were at that cafe, which was kind of the center for progressive activity in the community. It grew out of a campaign that I ran for the Florida State House of Representatives. Whole nother story there. <laughs> so we have now been on the air with WSLR for 14 years with a mission to promote peace, democracy, sustainability, health, and social and economic justice. Everyone on the air at the radio station is a volunteer from the community, and one of your members, Mariano Vera, now hosts a show at WSLR, Nuestra Musica. So you can tune in and listen to him Tuesday mornings, every other Tuesday from 10 to noon, you can tune in and listen to that show. But apart from music, of course, we also offer public affairs programming local that covers local issues. We just added a new show 
on environmental issues with Andy Mele, who I know many of you know. He's probably spoken here on phosphate mining issues. Um, he and Justin Bloom are with the Suncoast Waterkeepers, and so we're very happy to have them on the airwaves now, uh, talking every week about environmental issues here in our community. We also carry syndicated programming like Democracy Now!, Alternative Radio, Law and Disorder, uh, the Ralph Nader Radio Hour, uh, lots of great information available on this radio station. Now, the Peace Center, the Peace Education and Action Center, was formed in 2007 by members of the Southwest Florida Coalition for Peace and Justice, of which the Manatee Fellowship was a member for many of years. That coalition has now uh, broken apart. It's not really active anymore. But um, at that time, there were several of us in the coalition that wanted to work in the school system to encourage more peace education in the schools. And we couldn't do it through the coalition because they weren't a 501c3 organization at that time, and they were mainly faith-based. So we had to have a different vehicle to do that. So we started the Peace Center, um, and we had some success, but we ran into a lot of roadblocks as well, trying to work in the school system, especially here in Manatee County. Basically, we're told peace is political. We're not bringing peace into the schools. <laughs> we can talk about war all we want to, of course, but eh, peace, not so much. We had a couple of champions in the Sarasota County school system, and we were able to accomplish some things down there. We supported the Peace Jam um, programs in both the Manatee High School and Pine View High School, and uh, those were successful. We sponsored Teach Peace conferences and brought in a lot of educational activities around that area. And at that time, we were working out of the closet at the Quaker Meeting House in Sarasota. <laughs> yes, and we, we worked out of that closet for a number of years. Um, and then in 2013, we opened the Fogartyville Community Media and Arts Center down in Sarasota. And that space shared space with the radio station. Um, and many of you have been there. Um, and so that space gave us a lot of opportunity to do more things, right? <laughs> and along the way, we supported a lot of other organizations. Uh, we were fiscal sponsors for Transition Sarasota for five years before they became a nonprofit of their own working to build a more resilient and, and sustainable uh, community here in Manatee and Sarasota. We also support the work of Minnesota Move to Amend, which I'll talk to you more about because you all are an endorsing organization of that effort, Food Not Bombs, Minnesota Protect Our Public Schools, the Sarasota Climate Justice Coalition, the Sarasota Ranked Choice Voting Coalition, and the New College Food Bank we helped get started as well. Also in 2015, the Peace Center was granted a license for a low-power community radio station, WBPV, and that stands for West Bradenton People's Voices, and it's located in West Bradenton, obviously. And until um, last year, that radio station, which simulcast WSLR, was located on the top of ACES Lounge out on Pomasola and Cortez. And um, ACES, of course, was torn down, so we were off the air for about a year. But we've just found a new location, and before I get to that, I have to say, we considered your fellowship as a location for our uh, antenna and transmitter site. You were, uh, we came before your board, and your board was supportive of that initiative. And we started to do some work in the garage here to put that tower up, but then a lot more engineering studies showed basically that this site was not going to work for us. So we weren't able to, to raise the tower here. But we were able then to um, come to an agreement with the fish preserve out in Cortez. And uh, we have now raised a 40-foot tower there. And WBPV is back on the air at 100.1 on your FM dial. So if you can't get WSLR at 96.5 FM, you can try to get us at 100.1. And you can also stream us on your computers or get the mobile app on your phones and listen anywhere in the world. Um, so that's a good thing. We're happy to have WBPV back on the air. Then, next step, 2016. Hmm, something happened in 2016 that changed <laughs> this country. And we started a quarterly activist newspaper at that time. It's called The Critical Times, and uh, we try to get copies of it up here when it gets printed. And I do have some additional copies today if you haven't picked up one yet for this quarter. Um, and we also started an online activist calendar uh, where people could submit all their events uh, of things that they're doing. Uh, and we also started hosting Activist Tuesdays every Tuesday at Fogartyville during season. We committed to uh, support local community groups that are doing organizing work here and have them come in and present their issues 
and help them try to recruit volunteers, basically. And the issues are not only local issues, state issues, national issues. We cover all of them. But we committed to do that, and we still are doing that um, today. The Peace Center has a new initiative right now that we're working on. on. It's the Anti-Racist Working Group. This group started um, in January of last year also with a five-month dialogue series and a three-day workshop on undoing racism. And it was a very powerful workshop. And the people basically who participated in that series and the workshop decided they wanted to continue. So we've continued to meet monthly at Fogartyville since then. And last month, we had our first coalition meeting. So we're trying to put together a coalition there of local groups that are already focused on anti-racist initiatives. How can we support each other, make sure that communication channels are open, and amplify the voices of the people doing this work locally? So that's a very important initiative for us. And we're working now to put together another Undoing Racism workshop for the faith-based community. So this is something you all may be interested in being involved in. We're starting outreach now to contact uh, different faith groups in the community to see if they'd like to participate in that workshop, probably in the spring of 2020. It takes a lot of work to, to pull one of those off. It's a group out of New Orleans that comes into town to do that training. So up until this point, WSLR and the Peace Education and Action Center were two distinct entities that operated in the same space, but many people really didn't see the separation because our mission and the people involved overlapped in so many ways. Then, in 2018, WSLR took a really big step, and the board of directors actually bought the property at that downtown location. And at that point, we decided at the Peace Center that it made more sense for WSLR to operate the entire building. So we turned over the operation of the Fogartyville Community Media and Arts Center, the Critical Times newspaper, the Critical Times activist calendar, all of that now is housed under WSLR because it made it more sustainable. They had a larger budget. They had a larger staff. It made it uh, a way that I knew this is going to continue to be sustained, right? So that was a wonderful thing. We have um, a wonderful concerts there uh, every weekend during season. We also have rotating art exhibits there. And I have to say I'm very pleased that some of your members, A.J. Wolf and Chris McCormick, are regular participators in our art exhibits. So we appreciate that. And um, so the Peace Center continues to do the advocacy work, the anti-racism work, all that work. And we use the space now at Fogartyville that's run by WSLR. So there's still this great relationship between the two organizations, right? Um, I want to talk a little bit, I know my time is running out, about Move to Amend, because you are an endorsing organization. I know that's very important to you. For those of you not familiar with that effort, Move to Amend is a grassroots effort to build a people's movement to pass the 28th Amendment to the Constitution. All right, And that amendment would say, in a nutshell, corporations are not people and money is not speech. Um, it would attack the Citizens United ruling that flooded our election system with corporate cash, but it would do more. There are a lot of groups out there working to end Citizens United. Move to Amend is different because it attacks the concept of corporate personhood, this thing that actually gives corporations constitutional rights. The Constitution was written for we the people to protect people's rights, not the rights of corporations. And unfortunately, what happened is that Corporations became very influential in the 1800s. They staffed the Supreme Court <laughs> with people that basically were railroad interests, and uh, they were able to uh, pass amendments or actually write things into to case law that gave corporations rights of people uh, under the Constitution. So not only so, if you end Citizens United, you end corporations' First Amendment rights. But right now. Corporations have Fourth Amendment rights for search and seizure protection. They have Fifth Amendment rights, uh, uh, due process. They have rights under the Fourteenth Amendment for equal protection. That was a Fourteenth Amendment was written to, uh, to help end slavery and give all citizens equal rights. But somehow corporations got into the game, right? So this is very, very critical. Right now we have 75. Well, our goal this year is 75 sponsors in the House of Representatives for the We the People Amendment. We're halfway there. The latest person to sign on was Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. So go AOC. And um, what happens is every year you have to go back and get all your sponsors to sign on again. So that's the process we're on right now: is contacting folks that had signed on last year, getting them back on. Then we're moving on to people that signed our pledge to amend. 
And um, we basically have a 10-year plan. You can pick it up in the hallway uh, to get to this constitutional amendment. It is possible. You need to believe it is possible, right? A lot of people think it's not, and they say, oh, you're wasting your time. You're spitting in the wind, right? But, and Fred's going to come knock me off. <laughs> but we have a table out here. We want you to come see us. You can sign the Move to Amend petition. If you haven't, we have the Medicaid petition there. WSLR is a hub for collecting the Medicaid petition. The legislature hasn't passed it. The people will. Come and see me. We also have the Move to Amend Leadership Summit coming up in June. We'd love to send one of you to the Move to Amend Summit. We're trying to find folks who will go, who are really passionate about this issue to get more involved here on a local level. So thank you all for your time. Um, get involved, right? Um, we can't sit back. It's the time where we all need to step up and do a little piece. You can have a book study group here. There's so many things you can do. So come and talk to me, okay? Thank you. <laughs> We say in our church that the offering is a sacrament of the free church. What we mean by that is that we believe it is a blessing to be able to govern and support our religious community ourselves, to make possible by our generosity everything we dream of and do to live out our shared values. Every week we lift up the spiritual value of generosity by taking an offering for the ministries of this fellowship, our plate then, as it is passed among us, becomes filled with the evidence of that generosity. It is our harvest gathered in every week for that what most nourishes us. The ushers will now come among you to receive the gifts of the congregation. The morning offering is most gratefully received. Please join me in singing our closing hymn, number 34, Though I May Speak with Bravest Fire. It's in our gray hymnal. Please rise in body or spirit.
they speak with bravest fire and have the gift to all inspire and have not love my words are vain as sounding brass and hopeless gain though I may Please be seated. I invite Pat Rohr to come up and extinguish our chalice. And I ask and invite you to join me in reading our words in the bulletin. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honorable, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Go in peace.